Welcome to Meaningful Mornings. One of our most significant challenges with relating to people is expectations. Another word for this is projection or vikshepa. How does one regulate this? By vichara. The more one reflects, the less one projects, expects, and so on. A more severe struggle of ours is superimposition, which is feeling that you're something you're not. In Sanskrit, this is called tat atmya, that I am that, I am that. And we feel this because we have this disease of becoming. I have to become that. I have to become that. And the way to regulate this, three powerful words, tatuamas. You are not that. You are not that. You are that which is all. Infinity you are. What we do in Meaningful Mornings is we are trying to cut through projections, superimpositions. And the finality of Meaningful morning should be the feeling, aham brahmasmi. When my guide says, infinity, you are. I may not say with my words, but I can say with my smile, I am infinite. Bhagavad Gita's chapter 10 can be described as seeing Sri Krishna as being omnipresent. He's in the mountains, he's in gambling, and so on. Chapter 11, as being omnipotent. Whether Prince Arjuna stands up or not, this war is going to be facilitated. In chapter 12, omni-peaceful. This may not be so clear to you yet, but when we get into the latter part of this chapter, you will come to see how omni-peaceful Sri Krishna is. So Prince Arjuna begins this chapter asking, to whom do I offer bhakti? Do I be dedicated to the infinite, to the divine? And Sri Krishna responds saying, infinity eventually, divinity presently. To whom should Prince Arjuna offer his bhakti? To divinity. I'm giving you a couple of perspectives on this. When we offer our bhakti to divinity, Divinity is saguna. Saguna means with qualities and a form and a name. We do this because we feel we have qualities and a form and a name, particularly our equipment. We offer this bhakti with our equipment. We sing, we seek, we support, and so on. How do you offer? Bhakti to the infinite without equipment. You don't feel that you are your equipment. It's not a becoming, it's a being. Are you ready for that? We're not thus far. So Sri Krishna is telling us practically what to do. Here's another perspective. When you are in a controlled environment and you are contemplating with your eyes closed, then try to offer your bhakti to infinity. 
And as soon as you open your eyes, you shift to the uncontrolled environment. Offer your bhakti to divinity. That is the perfect balance of offering bhakti comprehensively. There will be a time, though Sri Krishna said in no time, there will be a time when you are enlightened. And I pray that it's before this body dies, meaning your body, my body. And at that time, you should feel inside that you and your trust triangle are the same. You and your guide, you and your map, you and your divinity are the same. That's the nature of oneness. But outside, you must never feel that you are the same. You must continue to serve your trust triangle. Those perspectives are clear. Let me offer a little bit more before we go to the next verse. Bhakti is facilitated by Shraddha. The more faith you have, the more dedicated you are. As an example, if you were to buy a plane ticket from a website you don't have faith in, you're not going to be dedicated to that website. You're going to do so much research, question your credit card, and so on. Yes? Based on the verses we've studied so far, Sri Krishna has shared, this is how you should live for me. But for the reflector, this is actually how Sri Krishna is living for us. He's the one who's always concerned with our welfare, facilitating our welfare. Ujjaswami Tejo Mayananda shared, Sri Krishna is not our wish fulfiller. He is our well-wisher. And if you just reflect on that, you will see the truth in this and be more devoted. I was interacting with a seeker recently and he was sharing they had a child on it unexpectedly. And this really threw his life particularly out of control. And I was sharing with him that the nature of living is not being facilitated by you, but rather by Sri Krishna. And with that one insight, you'll stop feeling deflated. And instead, you'll be devoted to what has happened to you. And visually, he agreed, agreed with me. <laughs> I don't know if he felt it inside. <laughs> and that's why a critical point in all of the verses we've studied so far, and this will be accentuated in the next verse, is surrender. Surrendering is actually saving. You surrendering your bhakti is a way of you saving yourself, saving yourself from negativity, from dejection, and so on. In verse 8, the word tasmat is not used, but you have to feel that there's a tasmat, a conclusion that's being shared. This is a famous verse. Mayeva mana adatsva Mai buddhim niveshaya, niva sishyasi mai eva, atha udvam na samshayaha. Joy. Mai, this word comes many times, which means in me, relatedly for me. Mana adatsva, the mind is to be fixed in me. The next quarter, mai comes again. Buddhi neveshaya, the intellect is to live in me. Now, these aren't even teachings. This is the truth. We've already experienced this in chapter 11. All is living in Sri Krishna. The gross world, the subtle world. 
Adatsva Neveshaya. We've been exploring this in our verses these weeks as chant with the mind and inquire, observe with the intellect. Remember, Eco, what is your body doing? Engaging. What is your mind doing? Chanting. What is your intellect doing? It is observing. It's inquiring into how can I help people. Here's another way to think of this first line. Sri Krishna is sharing that your heart, that is the mind, is to follow your head, that is the intellect. But if you change the words, it is your belief should follow logic. Whatever you believe in, make this more logical. Such as, in our Bhagavata class on Sunday, I was sharing, the more you know creation, the more you come to understand and appreciate that there has to be more than creation, which is consciousness. We all believe in consciousness, but if you start to reflect in a logical way, this is called yukti, then you'll see that your belief transforms into faith. And after your heart follows your head, then what has to happen? There has to be a change in lead. The head is to follow the heart. Logic is to follow faith. Everyone's recognizing that. You can't use logic to get to the ends. Logic is a means. Faith is the methodology to get to the end. What will happen if you reflect on that you're living in divinity, so you're living for divinity? Nivasishyasi, Mayeva, Mayi, that word is coming again. You will live in Sri Krishna alone. You will not live in pleasure or possession or position. You will live in peace. Try to feel that. We're so used to writing, rest in peace. That person doesn't even know that they're resting. <laughs> Can you live in peace? I'm going to read to you two insights from Puja Swami Chinmayananda. The Gita rightly advises that the devotee must bring his discriminating intellect to pierce through the stony idol of contact, and contact, the pulsating truth it represents. His point is that Sri Krishna doesn't live in your puja room. Sri Krishna doesn't live in the mandir. Sri Krishna lives in all, including you. You have to go deeper, be more authentic than just belief and logic to have the faith that he is our well wisher if our minds are resting on the Lord and our intellects have dived into the very depths of the infinite, our individualities end and we merge to become one with the infinite, the all-pervading. Therefore, the Lord says, thereafter you shall live in me. We identify so strongly with our minds and intellects. What if that identification so strongly was in Sri Krishna? Then you'd identify with him. He would be him. Summarizing, as we shift in thought, this portion of Bhagavad Gita is on upasana. Another word for upasana, bhakti. Another word for bhakti, devotion. Another word for devotion, dedication. When you reflect on whom you're living in, 
how can you not live for the one you're living in? To me, these are not teachings. These are not insights. These are facts. From inspiration to application. Your application yesterday was to rate how ready you are to die. Are you happy with your reflection? Or un <laughs> unhappy with your reflection? <laughs> I see a hundred, awesome, and an 80. Those are good, <laughs> good numbers. <laughs> Another hundred, wow. <laughs> for Vivek, I also feel it's high. And the reason for this is our nature is awareness. When awareness as if gets expressed as creation, do you know what that is? That's Bhagavan's dream. We're all living in Bhagavan's dream. What can happen to us? Nothing can happen to us. So I reflect a lot on that. And that's why if in this dream that I die, then I die. <laughs> Me not being ready for it, it's not going to change anything. Change anything. <laughs> Here is your application for today. I want you to feel that you're living in his dream. Feel that you are living in Sri Krishna's dream. Shanti, 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 he. Be safe, be sound, be serene, be joyful.